Masechet Nedarim, Daf Nun, Dalid, we begin the seventh pedic, although we continue the very same theme of food categories. If I vow a certain category, what exactly is included or not? If someone makes a vow and says, I am not going to have vegetables, they nevertheless are permitted to eat gourds. Uh, why is a gourd not a vegetable? Uh, there are several reasons, but we'll go with a simple one, is that it's not readily edible. It has to be cooked first, whereas standard vegetables are edible as is. They can be cooked, uh, but they're edible as is. So even though a gourd, um, uh, so a, a gourd may be technically a vegetable, maybe technically it's a fruit, uh, but it's not typically what is included in vegetable and therefore is permissible to be eaten according to Tanakama. But Rabbi Akiva, Ose, Rabbi Akiva says that a gourd is a vegetable. Maybe it's a little off the beaten path of what a normal vegetable is, but it's still included in vegetable and therefore it would be prohibited. And now the, a discussion ensues. Amru lo Rabbi Akiva, ba'lo omed adam l'shlucho kach liyadak v'omed lo masati ela diluin. So the uh, the Tanakhama, the Chachamim, tell argue with Rabbi Akiva, and they say, "I'll give you a proof that a gourd is not what people usually." Uh, think about when they say vegetable. If someone sends a, a messenger and says, do me a favor, go to the store and buy me a vegetable. And he comes back and says, oh, sorry, oh, I only found gourds. Right? What you see is that, see, if he found uh, carrots, tomatoes, he would have said, here you go, I found you vegetables. These are nice, typical vegetables. Uh, but the fact that a person says, sorry, right, I only found gourds implies that a gourd is not what a person means by vegetable. I'm getting you something different. All right, that's a pretty good proof. And remember, for for uh, vows, all that matters is not the dictionary definition or the biblical definition or the technical scientific definition. It's just the way normal people use language. So this is a good proof. However, disagrees is that's not the that's not the usual conversation, right? Um, uh, the matter is, is this matter so, or would a person say, "Oh, I only found legumes"? A person would never do that. Legumes or a completely different category of vegetable, right? If I asked you to go get vegetables, you would say, oh, sorry, I only found legumes, right? You would say, I didn't find any vegetables. That's it. You would not replace one with the other. Therefore, from the fact that the, the messenger said, um, I only found gourds means that I did find something that is a vegetable. Um, and so therefore, we see that uh, dilu in gourds are included in vegetables, whereas um, legumes are not included in vegetables. Okay, so you see both agree that the gourd is somewhere in between. It's not a typical vegetable. And the truth is that if I send someone to go and buy vegetables, it would be an unusual choice to bring back gourd. Uh, but Tanak, so Tanakama says, Chachamim say, since it's an unusual choice and people do not refer primarily to gourds and they're going to apologize and say, sorry, I only found gourds. You see that a gourd is not what someone has in mind when they say vegetables. Rebecca Yiva, however, says, although it's true, he's going to apologize that he only found gourd, but that still is included as a vegetable, even if it's somewhat unusual. Um, it's completely, you, you would never say, um, I didn't find vegetables. Uh, you, you would never come back and say, I found some, uh, I found some uh, beans. That would not be included in vegetables at all. Okay, so that's the discussion. And now we go back to the, uh, to the topic. Um, if someone says, I'm not going to have uh, vegetables, he, he may not have these Egyptian beans, full beans, when they are dry, uh, but he's permitted when they're wet, uh, when they're fresh, but he's permitted to have them, have them when they're dry. And here the reason seems to be that when they are fresh, they are edible, as is. So in that sense, they are similar to uh, vegetables, and so people think of them also as vegetables, um, uh, maybe kind of like a pea, it's in the pea family. Uh, but when they're dry, then they're not edible in that way, and therefore they're not categorized as vegetables, and therefore he would be permitted to eat them uh, if they are dry.
All right, the Gemara is going to now continue the discussion here between Chachamim and Rabbi Akiva. Hanodeh min hayadak. Uh, the question is, uh, according to Rabbi Akiva, who says that it's prohibited, uh, the question is why? He said, I'm not going to have vegetables. He didn't say anything about gourds, so how come Rabbi Akiva would include a gourd if they're not a typical vegetable? So we're doubling down uh, on the side of Chachamim against Rabbi Akiva. Amar Ula Beomer Yarke Kedera Alai. Ula says, You're right. Rabbi Akiva would not make sense and would not even have agreed that gourds are included if he just said, I'm not going to have vegetables. It must be an ukimta on the Mishnah. must be the, a, a case where the person says, uh, a, a, a pot vegetables are prohibited to me. Vegetables that go in a pot. And that would include gourd because gourd is not eaten raw, it's eaten in a pot. All right, that's uh, his answer. Hold on, but maybe when he says in a pot, he means uh, vegetables that are eaten in a pot, meaning they're eaten as is, and you also put them in a pot for extra flavor. And so maybe it still should not include a gourd. So, Ula, sorry, even this formulation uh, is, not, uh, is not quite specific enough that we should include a gourd. And so we refine it and say, bashel alai. A person says, I'm not going to have any vegetables that are cooked, not just placed, but cooked in a pot. And so that would specifically refer to vegetables that are normally uh, cooked because they're not edible. And that, therefore, would include a gourd. That's why Rabbi, Ak- that's why, uh, Rabbi Akiva uh, says that the gourd is prohibited. All right. Now that we clarified that, let's see. Bemai kamei pelge. What's at the end, essence of their controversy? So Rabbanan say, whenever there's something that's ambiguous, if it's included in the category or, or not, you can test out anything that if I told the messenger to get it, and he would have to ask me, are you sure, do you want this subtype? That means it's not really the type. Like if I ask someone, can you go and get me coffee? And they say, Oh, I, I only have instant. Uh, so if the fact that you have to ask means that instant is not considered normal coffee. Um, so therefore, the gourd, the fact that if I said, go get vegetables, and the a messenger would say, oh, they only have gourd. Do you want that? So the fact that he has to ask means it's not typically a vegetable, and therefore, I don't have it in mind, and the vow does not apply to it. Whereas Rabbi Akiva says the opposite. He, he says, if uh, the shaliach would ask about it, the messenger would ask, that means it is of a type, right? The fact that if I say, go get me coffee, and he says, is instant okay? That means that instant is, is coffee, right? And no one would say, if I told him to get coffee, no one would say, is tea okay, right? I'm out of coffee, um, right? Nobody would mistake tea for coffee. Uh, you wouldn't include that. The fact that you're even asking a question means that I know it's uh, the unusual choice. Uh, it's not the typical choice for a vegetable, but a gourd is, and uh, he's just making sure. You said vegetables. Uh, is a gourd okay? Because after all, that is a vegetable. And so Rabbi Akiva says, if the messenger would ask about it, then it's okay. A messenger would never ask and say, um, uh, can I get some fish, right? If I ask him vegetable, he says, well, I'll get some fish, right? Is that okay? Nobody would ask that because that's not included in the category. Abaya says, even though Rabbi Akiva says that one is prohibited to eat the gourd, if I said, I'm not going to have any vegetables, nevertheless, even Rabbi Akiva would agree that a person would not get lashes for eating the gourd. Um, uh, so although uh, he, one should be stringent because maybe st- maybe uh, vegetables includes gourd, but even agree he agrees that the gourd is an ambiguous category and you're not going to give a person lashes uh, because there is some doubt there. Now, Tenan Hatam, uh, regarding the sending of a messenger, we see a similar halacha uh, regarding Me'ila in the Mishnah in Masechet Me'ila. Hashaliach she'asa shilichuto ba'al habayit ma'al, lo asa shilichuto shaliach ma'al. The law of Me'ila is that one commits Me'ila only if you do it by mistake. There's something that was consecrated to the Bet HaMikdash, 
I'm not allowed to use it, but I didn't realize. And then I used it, and I realized afterwards, then that person is chayav me'ila. Now, the, who is responsible in the case of a messenger? It depends. If um, a person sends a messenger, and the messenger does exactly as he's told, then it's the sender, the balabait, he's the one that's responsible. He's the one that told the messenger to go and do something, to uh, spend, to go buy something. I told, uh, I told the messenger, here's take this money and go buy me a shirt. And he does. He buys a shirt and turns out that that was me'ila money. Then the balabait is responsible. However, if I gave him money, I said, go buy me a shirt. And instead, he bought some books. Well, I didn't ask you to buy books. So he's doing that on his own. In that case, the messenger is the one that violates the me'ila. Okay, now let's now uh, let's apply this. Mantana, who is the author of that Mishnah? Amar of Chista Matitin de Loki Rabbi Akiva. That Mishnah must be not the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Why? Ditnan Kesad Amar Lo Ten Basar La Ruchim Atan Nahem Kabed Ten Kabed Atan Nahem Basar Hashaliach Maal. The continuation of that very Mishnah it gives an example and says here is a case. Uh, the owner of the of a house, the uh, the host of a meal, tells the waiter, "Go and uh, give meat to the guests." And then the waiter or the chef goes and he serves them liver, or the other way around. If the host says, "Give them liver," and he gives them just regular steak, uh, in that in both of those cases, it's the waiter, it's the messenger, who did wrong. Um, because he didn't do exactly what the host said. The host said meat, and he substituted it for liver, meaning liver we do not consider a type of meat. Okay, now, but according to Rabbi Akiba, he just gave us the principle that anything in which a messenger would ask about uh, to say, is it okay if I use this, that is considered part of the category. Now, if someone says, you know, go get some meat, and they and they uh, and they uh, and then they say, "Wait, is liver okay?" Right? Then that would make that would make sense. In other words, it's in, within the realm of something reasonable that liver would be considered a type of meat. Now, it's not a typical cut that you would usually say if you just say, give, give, "Give me some meat," and you get liver. You say, "Wait a second, this is not the normal uh, type of meat." Nevertheless, it's within the it's it's within enough within the category that the messenger would say, oh, you want meat? How about liver, right? Would that be okay? Um, whereas if I asked for meat, you would never come and say, um, how about carrots, right? No, that would not be an equivalent. And so therefore, according to the Biakiba, if the host said, go serve them meat, and then he gives them liver, um, that should be the balabait, right? The mobal habait, uh, because he did fulfill his uh, his duty, and not the messenger. So, for the fact that this mishnah says that the messenger is liable, means that this this mishnah is not Rabbi Akiva. Instead, it must be Rabbanan, because remember, Rabbanan were the ones that said if the messenger has to clarify, that means it's not within the category, and the messenger would have to clarify if you said go get meat. Uh, give them meat, and he said, is liver okay? It means he already knows that uh, liver is not exactly meat. That's not what you mean by it. And so you see, this would fit well with Rabbanan. So that was the opinion of Rav Chista. Abaya says, you know, we don't want to have a Mishnah be only according to one opinion. We'd rather it be unanimous. And says, I can explain this even according to Rabbi Akiva. Milam or Rabbi Akiva, the Sarich Amluche, even Rabbi Akiva would agree that he does have to ask. All right, he says, if the messenger would ask, then it's included. Yeah, but the, he does actually have to go and ask. And so, if he went and asked the the Balabite, listen, we have some, we have a lot of liver. Can I serve them liver? And then the the owner said, yes, that's fine. All right, then it will be okay. So obviously, here we're talking about a case where he didn't ask. Um, so the, the host said, give them meat. The messenger gave them liver. That's sufficiently outside the normal definition of the category that the messenger would be liable for um, for me'ila. Uh, however, is sufficiently within the category uh, that if he made a vow, 
that would include the subcategory. They repeated what Abaye said, his nickname is Nachmani, because that was actually his name. Um, and he said, and Rava said, yes, Nachmani, what Nachmani said is correct. Uh, uh, that um, uh, even Rabbi Akiva, who says, yes, in terms of a, uh, the definition of a vow, uh, you use a subcategory if. A messenger would ask, uh, but for Meila, the messenger actually does have to ask um, in order for it to be considered a full messenger ship, in which case the Balabai would be liable. The next part of the discussion is going to try to identify who are who is the Chachamim, who is the Tanakama in our Mishnah. If you just look at our Mishnah by itself, it looks like the majority opinion would be the lenient one that says the words are okay, and the Akiva is the minority opinion. And so if we just had the Mishnah, we would tend to decide the Halakha according to the majority opinion, Tanakama, that would permit the gourd. Uh, what we're going to see in this Padaita is that it's actually the other way around. Mantana de Peligal Ban Shimon Ben Gamaliel he who argues with Rabbi Akiba it's not all the sages that is just uh, Rabbi Yudanasi made that anonymous because he wanted he, he thought the halacha should be so but look in this following Benaita you'll see that the opinion of the Chachamim is actually a singular opinion of Rashbag de Tanya Hanodemin Habasar Asur Bekol Mine Basar Vasur Barosh Uba Raglaim Uba Kane Uba here the Tanakama, the Chachamim, are the ones that are um, that are stringent and and would and be more inclusive of of categories. They say that if someone says I'm not going to have any meat, then not only is he prohibited to eat just you know regular steak, he cannot eat any type of meat, and not the head of the animal, and not the feet, and not the windpipe and not the liver, and not the heart. Um, uh, and also, that would also even include meat of birds. Uh, bird meat is also, when people say meat, um, they're including bird meat as well. Um, that's probably why uh, birds and uh, milk are prohibited, because meat and milk is prohibited, and people associate um, a, a, a fowl with meat. And so all those would be prohibited. So this is definitely an inclusive, expanded opinion like that of Udubi Akiva. Uh, however, even this opinion would say that the person would be permitted to eat uh, the flesh of fish and grasshoppers. When you say meat, you don't mean fish and grasshoppers. The Gimada will try to explain why. What's the difference between uh, birds and fish? Okay, that is the Chachamim Tanakama. However, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, Hano de Mina Basar, Asur Beko Mine Basar, Umutar, Barosh, Baraglam, Bakane, Bakabed, Balev, or Baofot, Venza de Chloma Besad, the Gimachagabim, Rashbag. The minority opinion uh, says that if I said I'm not going to eat meat, only meat, regular meat, steaks, uh, normal parts of the animal are prohibited. But the person is permitted to eat the head and the feet um, and the windpipe and the liver and the heart of the animal and also is permitted to have bird meat and certainly would be permitted to have fish and grasshoppers. Every, even, even the Tanakama agreed with that. Uh, so we see here that Rashbag in this Badaita is the one that says we, we follow the stricter limited definition of what people normally refer mostly to when they say meat means only these typical items and that is the opinion of the Tanakama and our Mishnah. So based on this, we're actually gonna we're actually gonna flip it, and it seems that the Gemara by doing this often when the Bavli does this, it's kind of, it's doing it, it's uh, identifying the Chachamim in order to show that Chachamim are actually a minority opinion, and therefore that gives the Akiva's opinion, uh, especially here where the where the Rabbi Akiva's opinion is is stated anonymously. Uh, that promotes Rabbi, um, Rabbi Akiva's opinion to be the better candidate for the halacha. And similarly, Rashbag would say that the innards, the intestines of the animal, that's not considered meat. And anyone who eats them, we don't consider that person to be a human being. This is animal food. This is dog food, right? What are you doing eating this uh, low-level uh, uh, low part? 
of the animal. Now we're going to uh, um, ex uh, uh, explain this a little further to tone it down. This is, the truth is that anyone who eats the intestines, it is like meat, right? People eat intestines now. Uh, but we, what he meant to say is that someone who were to go out and buy intestines, that person is subhuman. You have some money you're going to spend. Why would you, you same amount of money you could spend on good, nice meat, and instead you spend it on the dirty, disgusting intestines, so you're not a reasonable person. It would seem that Rashbach's conclusion here is that intestines is considered meat uh, sufficient, su sufficiently for a vow. If someone says, I'm not going to make a vow, I make, if, I, if I'm not going to eat meat, then uh, also we cannot include intestines. Because p people who eat intestines, that is considered meat, even though it's really a bad choice. Um, however, uh, that, is, that is normal food. Uh, whereas these other items, uh, the, the, the head and the, the feet, um, those things are not considered meat because really those are very rarely eaten, very not typical. All right, so that explains Rashbag. Now back to Tanakama. How come he included, how come Tanakama, who is the stringent one, included foul meat within the definition of meat? If someone says, I'm not going to eat meat, they also cannot have birds. Why? Uh, well, it's because um, a messenger would ask about it, right? If someone said, if I said, go eat meat, go go buy some meat, the messenger would say, um, uh, you know, would you mind if I get some chicken, All right? And so since he would ask about it, it means it's sufficiently within the possibility of the category of meat. But if that's if that's the case, hold on, fish is actually this exact same thing. Also, a messenger would ask if there's no meat. Uh, then the messenger would 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 ask. Okay, so, uh, listen, uh, I you know I heard there's not a lot of meat on the market. If I don't find meat, can I bring fish instead? And um, right, so the fact that he would ask, and fish is a normal substitute for meat, and therefore, since he would, the messenger would ask about it, if it's okay to bring fish, um, when the when he was asked to bring meat, it means fish is still also within the category of flesh, and therefore it should be prohibited. Why did Tanakama pr permit uh, eating fish but prohibit eating birds? when one makes a vow against meat. We have two answers here. Abaye explained, oh, could be talking about a person, a case where the person just did some bloodletting, and eating fish is not considered healthy after bloodletting. Uh, but that doesn't work. If so, if he was just uh, he was just a patient and did bloodletting, he also should not have birds. Shemuel, who was a doctor, said, someone who lets blood and then goes and eats bird meat, his heart will race and fly like a bird. Um, he's going to have uh, this, you know, lower blood pressure and and something about the bird meat is not going to be good for him. So he should not have that. We have a Braita further that says, um, You should not do bloodletting if afterwards you're going to eat uh, fish or birds or salted meat. So you see that these are all equally prohibited. So Abaye. It would make no difference if he's if he's letting blood. Furthermore, Vetanya, Vikizdam, Loyochal, Lochala, Velogivina, Vlobesim, Loshechalaim, Veloofot, Lobasad, Maliach. Another Benaita says if you let blood, you should not have milk or cheese or eggs uh, or cress, and not birds either, and not salted meat. So to answer all that, Abaya Kadan say, No, uh, birds are just not good if you cook them in a normal way, uh, b boiling them. But if you broil them or pot roast them, uh, whatever shilika means, if you prepare it that way, then the birds are fine. And so that's why um, we're assuming that we're talking about someone who made a vow against eating meat and he happens to have just let blood. And so therefore, he certainly... Uh, doesn't mean fish because no one who let blood would ever eat fish so therefore he's permitted to eat fish because he didn't have it in mind when he said uh, meat uh, but when he says basar 
he may very well have in mind birds, even though birds are typically not good, but if you prepare them by shidlika, then they are edible and healthy for someone who let blood. Baye Amar, Kegon Dechaibin Le Aene. Or another answer by Abaye that perhaps is talking about okay, someone who has uh whose his eyes hurt. Tedagim Kashin La Enaim because um uh, um, eating eating uh, uh, fish is bad for one's eyes, and that's why when he had in mind his eye his eyes were hurting, and he made a vow against eating meat. Certainly, he's not going to eat fish because they're bad for him. So he didn't have that in mind. Therefore, the vow does not cover fish. Hold on, we have we have support from the doctor Shemuel that if you have an eye ache, it's actually good to eat fish. And his mnemonic was the letters that are in a row in the alphabet nun samech ayin, and that is a mnemonic for nuna. That means fish. Sama is medicine for the eyes. So therefore, he should actually have fish, and therefore he, he should have in mind. When he says, I'm not going to eat meat, that fish also is something what he has in mind that he would eat. And the answer is, Hahu sof uchla. No, when Shemuel said that fish are good for the eyes, that's what the, at the end of the infection, uh, whereas uh, the uh, before when he says bad for the eyes, in Abaye's case, that he was assuming is talking about the beginning of the infection when fish are not good for the eyes. Baruch Adonai Lodam, Amen v'Amen.